Hi, Bill Schoenberg, Fast Pitch Power. Last week, we started to talk about the involvement of the lower arm, the wrist, and the fingers in delivering your movement pitches and how important spin is in establishing a really, really solid movement pitch. We had talked in previous posts, again, about establishing your throw zone for throwing your movement pitch along with your fastball and your changeup. I called it last week the macro view. This is the micro view. What happens on the smaller level with your forearm, your wrist, your fingers, how you set up to deliver the grip, how you set up to deliver your movement pitches to get the most bite and the most break that you could possibly get. So, we talked about screwballs last week, now we're going to talk about curves. So I'm going to come in so you can see that how I get to the back of the throw zone after I set up my runway, my throw zone, how I get to the back of that throw zone with the correct position of my hand and my forearm, and what I do with my forearm, my wrist, my hand, and my fingers is going to make all the difference in the world in how good that movement pitch is. So, curveball. I'm not going to go again too deeply into this, but in previous posts you'll see the establishing of the throw zone for a curveball means that my stride foot, I'm a right-hand pitcher, so that's my left foot, it's your right foot if you're a left-hand pitcher, my stride foot is slightly to the right of the power line, my head is on the power line, and I'm going to do a circle, and I'm going to come into the back of the circle with my elbow in close to my body and my palm up. This is how I like to teach my pitchers how to throw a true curveball. Now there are drop curves, it can be slightly different of the hand position, but I like a relaxed cup. Not tense, nice and relaxed to come into the throw zone. Let's talk a little bit about the grip. The grip that I like for the curveball is having my two middle fingers on the close in seams with my pointer sort of locking in that ball so that it doesn't squirm or slide off of my fingers as I release the ball through the throw zone. So I want these two fingers on the close-in seams, I want the thumb also touching a seam, and I want my pointer finger sort of acting as a little block there so that my ball can't slide backwards as I go to deliver the ball with maximum spin. So now I get back into my position and I get to the back of the throw zone. Now from this point, again from the back of my dry foot toe to the front of my stride foot toe, I have created a path that if I follow I'm going to be drawing a picture of the pitch. What does my forearm, wrist, fingers and hand do? My forearm, again, is going to be pointed up because that's where my palm is. My elbow is going to be close to my body. I want my fingers for my curveball outside the ball as long as possible. And my fingers are extremely important. If I just use my fingers, I can create that much spin. My fingers alone, four, three, two, one, just by doing this, can create that much additional spin. When you add that, to the lower arm whipping through, the forearm fire, the wrist moving in this direction, and the fingers, four, three, two, one, you're going to get a tremendous amount of spin on that ball. Fingers outside the ball, starting from your back hip and finishing at your front hip, you're going to get this kind of rotation on the ball, and if you throw it correctly, with good front side resistance, you're going to get a tremendous amount of bite as that ball goes through the strike zone. Next week, we're going to talk about drops, and then we'll go to rise balls. I hope that the screwball and the curveball information has been useful to you. We always want to make you the best pitchers you could possibly be. Any questions or comments, please, we welcome them. It's been great talking to you. Speak to you next week.